Well, joining us now in the studio is Geary County Schools Superintendent, Do Dr. Reginald Eggleston. Good morning. Well, good morning. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So I wanted to start with recently, Fort Riley Middle School teacher Pamela Rickard mm -hmm. was awarded $95,000 in damages and attorney's fees. Now to give some background, this was after a lawsuit claimed her First Amendment rights were violated due to her Christian beliefs. Now she filed that lawsuit against the district after she was rep reprimanded and suspended in April of last year for addressing a biological female student by their legal and enrolled name. How is the district moving forward following this lawsuit and the settlement? Well. The district always wants to do everything it can to provide a safe place for all students. Uh, we follow the law and we put procedures and practices in place so that administrators and teachers can abide by them and of course do the right thing in order to keep a safe place for all students. We will continue to monitor the situation. We have policies and procedures in place that we are ensuring that everyone is aware of and so that we can respond accordingly if events in the future occur like this. So I think we're at a good place because we've educated and informed all of our staff. Uh, we have 1,300 employees, and so uh, making sure everyone is on the same page is definitely something that we take serious, and we'll continue to monitor uh, the implementation of our practices as we move forward. Okay, and now looking back to last school year, Junction City High School principal Mary Tart was removed from her position and reassigned. Now the NAACP said she was treated unfairly and they requested a meeting with you. So what can you tell us about that meeting? Well, out of respect for Ms. Tart, of course, I can't go down the path of personnel matters, but we have had several conversations with the NAAC, whether it's been talking about the hiring of people of color uh, that represent the student body. Uh, we have a very diverse student body and we want to make sure that our employees represent that as well, as well as just making sure that we're creating opportunities for all students to be successful. So uh, I think we're in a good place. We've had several meetings with them and we will continue to have meetings uh, and I think we're working uh, in the same vein. We want this what's best for all of our students and we want to make our district as the best district that we possibly can. And so I think having meetings with the NAACP as well as other members of the community will help us do that. Okay, now switching gears to this school year, it mm -hmm. just got underway, so what can you tell us about this new school year? Well, it's been a great school year. I believe having a long summer break has tempered some of the emotions just in comparison to what we dealt with during COVID for the past two years. Uh, our enrollment is doing well. And so uh, I, I think everybody's just in a better place. We had our general session uh, last week and it, it went well. I think it was just a good opportunity for us all to come together, uh, focus on our mission, which is preparing today's students for tomorrow's world and ensuring that we have the right focus. So I'm excited about it. Uh, I've been in vi buildings, visiting classrooms, a lot of positive energy, students are in a good place. So I'm excited about the start of this school year. Okay, now um, are there any new safety and security efforts the district has implemented this year? Well, we've put a lot of efforts in making sure that we're all on the same page. As you know, there have been many incidents that have occurred over the past year. And so we are just uh, galvanizing all the support we can to make sure our drills and practices are in place. Uh, everyone's doing simple things, wearing IDs, making sure doors are secured at all times. And we've told everyone, if you see something or hear something that appears to be suspicious, notify someone so we can respond, intervene and take proactive measures and not allow something that could have been prevented to occur. So I think it's just informing and educating everyone so that we're all on the same page, we're all sensitive, we don't overlook anything or take something for granted. And so uh, again, with the number of employees that we have, uh, making sure we have a consistent message and making sure that our practices are, are known and rehearsed so that we have muscle memory there is very significant. Absolutely. Now we're almost out of time, but I wanted to talk about the uh, USD 475 is the first district in Kansas to receive a Purple Star designation. So talk about what this is and what it means for the district. Well, it's a tremendous uh, accomplishment for the district. Uh, it basically means that we are a military friendly organization. Uh, over 50% of our students are military dependents with Fort Riley being there. So we have military students in all of our 18 schools. Uh, and we take it as an honor to serve those who 
serve our country. Uh, actually, this week, tomorrow, I'll have an opportunity to present to the State Board of Education about the Purple Star designation and what it means to our district and how we're implementing it and recognizing uh, the men and women and the young people, the children of those uh, individuals in uniform and uh, how we serve them and, and best support them as they make transitions throughout their education career. Okay, well, Superintendent Eggleston, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Oh, thank you. Always a pleasure. Now for a look at your forecast, let's send it over to meteorologist Becky Taylor.